Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders, the Authority Positioning Coach. Today we have with us Stephen Guilfoyle, who's the CEO and founder of Affordicare Insurance. Stephen, welcome to the program. Hey, Mike. Thanks for having me. Hey, I'm excited to talk to you. I've seen some of your interviews and uh, connections out there on the LinkedIn sphere. So I'm excited to learn about uh, Affordicare Insurance. And um, before we jump into that, I always love kind of hearing the origin story, backstory. So give us a little bit of your background of your entrepreneurial journey to this point. Well, I promise it's not going to be as close as yours, Mike. But um, you know, when we're uh, little kids, it's one of those things that, you know, we're thinking about, you know, being a firefighter or like an astronaut. And mine was actually always to be a car salesman. And so uh, <laughs> a- after college, it was uh, one of those things where I actually failed at that too, but ended up getting right into insurance and it was door-to-door sales. And, um, you know, I was a personal trainer in college. And so I had, you know, always that vision that, you know, kind of like one life, one body and take care of it the best you can. So since I wasn't smart enough to be a doctor, um, you know, the second best thing to do that was, was insurance. And so um, it was door-to-door sales for um, over five years and learned a lot about, you know, what to do, what not to do. And um, it just kind of grew into a, a really beautiful kind of picture from there because we saw, you know, all the things that were being done correctly, the things of how to treat agents better along the way. And uh, so, you know, we've gotten to the point now where, you know, we have, you know, from knocking on dirt roads to, um, you know, an office in almost every single state and um, just closing on almost 10,000 um, agents and brokers that we have. So it's, wow. it's been uh, exciting. And again, it's, if it wasn't for those people along the way, uh, it wouldn't, wouldn't be where it is right now. Yeah, and if it wasn't for some of the, you know, roll up the sleeves, get the dirt under your fingernails work that you did, you might not have built such a solid foundation because I've, I've, it's very rare that you hear anything door to door or cold call telemarketing. So you, you started off with some, you know, grassroots, hardcore marketing, and now you're able to, you know, have that really tight relationship building. And I think that probably, I don't know, one of the underlying threads of benefit of that is you're talking to people face to face, eye to eye, belly to belly, doing that door to door. And that kind of got you into the, you know, mannerisms, facial expressions, building relationships. So did you find that some of that carried forth when you were now growing your large agency? Yeah, I mean, I I feel like that's a, a great point because when you're doing that, the hardest thing I think in the sales world is that complete cold call kind of in person stuff. And it takes, I think, a a really special person. And I think it's a, a whole different skill set that you learn. So I think it's kind of like, if you can make it there, you can make it anywhere. Too. Yep. And that's, uh, I, I think there's a lot of stuff that it makes you appreciate where you came from, what you've done to get there, because kind of like you said, actually like the rolling up the sleeves, the, you know, the literal dirt roads, I think that really goes a long way for that appreciation for sure. of it. Yeah. So what do you guys do now with building and nurturing and deepening relationships? Because yes, your your end user is the person that needs your insurance coverages and we'll dive into what you guys provide. But I think that um I think that really at the core of things is boy, people want to be cared for. They want to be treated as someone other than just a number or a, a line on a, a CRM. So what do you guys do to build relationships with both your strategic alliance partners as well as the people that you serve. Well, I mean, when you when you get back to it and you look at every probably relationship that you know anybody's here is listening on this call, your closest relationships are the one that you have the most literal face time with. And so, not only for our you know existing uh, uh, sales force, but our tell, it's so important that we try to do every month or every quarter do some really kind of extreme things that really kind of put us apart. Like we all will rent a track out and um, rent a bunch of like uh, Lamb- uh, McLarens and Ferraris and do like an entire like day of driving experience and classroom stuff with that. Um, you know, things that like, is not just like going to the country club and playing a couple of rounds of golf. This is kind of like big time experiences that we can kind of provide and it creates a family kind of atmosphere. So it's not just about, you know, having the best product and having the best rates, 
Um, it's about having a true relationship with these people that, you know, are going to be your family. And so we look at it even as, you know, from an agent perspective, you know, for them to, you know, go somewhere else, it pushes them away and they kind of, they lose part of that family, you know, if they don't, yep. you know, stick around. So I think there's, it's a multiple good reasons, but that's probably the best answer I can give you with that. For sure. And I think that uh, the consumers, the, the person buying the products and services, they expect good quality and, and fair treatment and great prices. They expect all that. And then they're like, yeah, but that's what your competitors talk about. So when you, when you start getting into then how we treat and serve and really bring extra value, that's where it really helps to edge out the competition and bring that competitive advantage in. Do you guys do um, things in the community and, and how, how, uh, how do you work to serve and, and give back that way? Yes. So that's actually a really um, great question as well. And I'm, I'm glad you asked because I have actually had, um, that's one of the things that it seems that sometimes the, the most easy to forget. And so a lot yeah. of the events that we do, we try to do three different parts, almost everything we do. We do one part where it's charity based, where like we'll go to like a children's hospital and have a event there. And then in the same day or the same um, event, we'll do something where it's kind of like a, a fun event, like, you know, doing a, you know, bungee jumping or go-kart racing or something yeah. like that. And then the third part being kind of the actual like networking part. And it's not just, you know, bringing all of our mutual clients together as a air conditioning company, somebody as a roofing company, somebody as a car dealership, you know, someone's buying a car, someone has an AC and somebody has a roof, right? So we can bring all of our existing people together. It's not only just, making that feel good thing that you've done that really is helping the people in need, but doing it with like-minded people that, you know, we're all able to bring together too. So I feel like when we have a client, it's not just something to provide, like you said, great service. If you can provide extra value by giving them other, you know, outlets for clients, I think that's a huge step in the process of that. Yeah. I mean, it, it really, I mean, I, I know we've not ever met before or spoken before, but I'm sure that this probably is a great insight into your company, Afford a Care. How else can we show our deep care for our strategic alliances, our business partners, our clients, our, our you know, employees? And when you can show care like that, um, it really speaks volumes. And I'll bet that we could probably do a whole other uh, episode on how you show your care for your internal employees, because you know what? If your employees aren't happy, then they're not going to treat the end user and the customers happy uh, uh, well. So I think that's such a big uh, uh, um, thing for people to keep in mind is it's that holistic approach. It's not just here's our widget. We need to sell it to that person. Please, uh, you know, provide payment. It's like, you know what? We're humans here. Let's let it's, it's, you know, I've heard it said, you know, uh, B2B and B2C, you know, business to business and business to consumer. It really is P2P, people to people. We're humans. Let's just treat each other great and and uh, see where that leads lead to the growth. I, I love it. Couldn't have said it any better. And I think the one thing to piggyback on it is, you know, with the biggest thing that have changed the last couple of years is, you know, everybody is doing webinar meetings. And of course, yeah. it's really easy to be really efficient, right? I mean, you can get probably 20 meetings knocked out in what should normally take you a couple of weeks places, right? But you lose that personal approach and, you know, that the over coffee, over lunch kind of thing, it has a totally different thing and it makes that ourselves kind of in more impersonable. And so I think when you can have those experiences, it, it um, you know, it's kind of almost a, a competitive advantage, which you wouldn't even have thought that a couple of years ago. 100%. Hey, so now uh, let's roll into uh, when you are serving and providing, you know, great services and prices uh, and affordable insurance products. What are the main uh, categories that you guys specialize in in your coverages? Yeah, so r over the years, it's changed. And the funniest thing with it is that I've probably heard that we're insurance poor um, probably more times than I have nickels to uh, put together. But uh, the biggest thing that what allowed me to kind of have that mindset when I've heard that was if your insurance port means your actual health insurance has got to be pretty bad then. If that's such a large expense and nothing else even compares to that and you can't even buy anything else, that's the biggest thing. So that's the problem that we set out to solve, which is the actual company or individual like major medical experience and making that um, more accessible, easier and actually better to use and a better experience. Um, so right now, our main focus is large group for many of the carriers. We're the largest broker in the entire country for them. And 
that's been through a lot of different ways, but a lot of it's just been through that networking and that, that business to business referral that's basically kind of been created from that. So overall, the reason we have this very dedicated niche is because it allows us to use other people that are um, PNC agents or other types of insurance agents that maybe only sell life insurance. And we found to be able to partner with these people versus be competition. If we stay in our lane and can be very dedicated and focused, we can have other people that are great at what they do and bring in, them into our circle and allow us to all specialize in what we do and give the best experience to that client. Yes. You know, and and it's it reminds me of of what um, what you just mentioned there of like a uh, bank. I used to work years and years ago in a in a bank, and um, you would you would hear them talk about you know we need to get that checking and savings account. That's kind of the core thing, but yeah, that's kind of like the loss leader. But once we then get that, we want to then assist with, you know, and just moves on to the next and the next and the next. So it becomes like one of those pain points. So if health care coverage is one of the biggest things where, you know, really, if you look at someone's budget, um, and I can tell you in my budget, you know, the biggest line item every single month is that health coverage premium for my wife and four kids. And it's like, that's a big amount. And if you can crack that nut, man, you have developed a great relationship with that client. And then they are open to go, well, how else can you help? Because obviously you've proved yourself here. Man, you should write a book or something, Mike. You are you're <laughs> spot on. You got it. <laughs> well, what else, what's what's next? Like, so once you uh, let's just say that you've got someone going, okay. Well, I'll, I'll throw you a bone here, and let's see uh, how you can do on our medical coverage. And they're like, okay, well, you, you got me here. That's awesome. What what is then the next uh, uh, logical step that typically your clients are going? I need help with this. Well. It's one of those things where, you know, there's a lot of recommendations that we can make. And of course, you know, it's a pretty intimate experience. This is why that years of trust and everything is so important with that. But I mean, when you look at the things that a business has, and yes, you're right. The biggest line item aside from probably their payroll is the health insurance. And so you solve that problem first, but then realize that, you know, they have everything from merchant processing to their um, staffing costs and their payroll and things like that. And so a lot of our really strategic partnerships that have gone so well for us over the years is allowing other people like them um, and vice versa to help us kind of, you know, solve those problems collectively. And so it's, a lot of this is being a handoff. And so, yeah. you know, if there's people that are watching this or listening to this and they provide some service to a business, we kind of look at it as, you know, if we can solve that major problem and free up a couple hundred thousand dollars a year for a group of 20 or 30 people, which is super reasonable, it allows us then to partner with those people and, you know, get in the door. And then it makes us look even better because now we've won on the health insurance. We've won on their processing. We've won on their payroll. And we, again, can specialize in our niche and have the best of the best in an industry that we've partnered with to allow the, the end result to be exactly what they're hoping for. I love it. You know, um, one of my favorite books that I've read, and I'm a big book reader, um, is a book by the name of The Go-Giver by Bob Berg. Have you ever read that one? I actually have. I don't read a lot of books, but you, you found one I, I got, so I appreciate that. Yep, that's a really it's really awesome. But one of the things that Bob teaches in that book, as well as I've gone through some of his courses, is he says, all things being equal, people want to do business with those that they know like and trust. And for years, I've called it the KLT factor, the no like trust. Well, what we've talked about here is, you know, yeah, yeah, well, I, I know them. But then, yeah, I like them because they're, they're not, you know, up in my face, but I really trust them now because. And what you just described there is when you can win in the health insurance and save an organization massive like that, and you kind of engender that deep trust because it's like you, you talked a nice game, uh, uh, made it some nice points there, and now you delivered. And then, well, of course, what else do you have? Because it's that relationship that be, that's being built, and it's growing and growing on that trust that you're delivering on, and and it's and you're um, you know walking your talk, meaning you're not over promising and under delivering. In fact, maybe even you're you're just giving some good solid you know recommendations and predictions of hey here's what we should be able to do, and then maybe you're even delivering a little bit more on that. So. I think that a lot of people, whether it's a personal or professional relationship, they want to know that, you know what, if I've got all these 
angles and ten, uh, um, tentacles in my business that where all these costs are going out, man, if I can find one provider where it could take a whole lot of those and put them together, now no one provider can do everything, but boy, if, if I can s- s- develop that long-term relationship with one vendor and provider, that's a, that's a home run for that organization. So I, I love how you guys are just kind of building upon each other uh, uh, with, with all of those needs. Yeah, I, I, couldn't uh, agree with you more, obviously, because I said it. But um, <laughs> I, I, I think it does just highlight the point of having a specialty. And I think you know, people, especially insurance, you know, it, it's actually pretty guilty of this. Is that it's so easy to get appointed with different carriers or get li- different licenses. But what you lose, you do that, is you lose that specialty in the thing. And when you, and I mean, when you look at like kind of the life of the world, to be a jack of all trades doesn't pay anything. Be a specialist to be the best of what they do in the world pays more than anything else. And so when you get somebody and they're the best lawyer, the best doctor, the best burper, the best, you know, what that is a huge differentiator with you and the rest of the market, which is again kind of why we said is we like to be very focused in that knowing that they're getting the best at important, but also that we're not um, our reach isn't overwhelming, and it basically puts out potential partners that could be um, competition if we did. Yes. You know, in that last uh, uh, sequence of, of points you were making, one word jumped out at me, the word best. So I would like to wrap up our talk here with what do you feel is the best business advice or business decision you've ever made? Um, it's actually pretty easy, and it really flows back to essentially our entire conversation up to this point. And it's a good person. Yeah. And, you know, to, there's not a whole lot of expansion needed on that. But um, I think you said it best that, you know, you you are liked and you're trust and you're respected. That goes a really long way. And it doesn't just come from, you know, a one minute phone call. It comes from years of trust that you've earned. And I think when you're truly looking out for that best person, and I can't tell you how many ones that we've, people we've talked to where we'd say, hey, you know, based on this, this, and this, I think you're actually better to stay here. And I think people, it's a refreshing thing because it shows that you're not looking out for looking out for that best interest. And a lot of these clients, things happen, things change, um, and we end up having the best solution for them. And I think that open and honesty that there's no pushiness, there's no sales stuff. And it's just saying, this is what it is. These are your options. And I'm going to be able to deliver and be a really trusted person with you for your whole life. Um, that's, I think that the best advice I can give you for somebody who's just starting out or even, you know, who's done it forever. I love it. That's so awesome. Stephen, I really appreciate you coming on today. And if anyone is interested in learning more about AffordaCare, whether it's an employer or an individual or a business, uh, what's the best way they can reach out and learn more about your firm? Um, best way would just be our website, which is AffordaCareInsurance.com. And um, there's a contact tab that you can contact the nearest office to you, and we'll get you connected with um, whatever you're you're looking for. So Michael, I appreciate the heck out of you. Um, you're super, super busy. I know it, take, it took us a couple months to connect, but um, you've been a blessing. You're great at what you do, and I appreciate the heck out of you. So thank you again for all the time today. Thank you so much. You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.